The Straight Red Card is sponsored by Roughneck Scarves. Visit Roughneck Scarves for your supporters' gear from Seattle, Portland, New York, to the Philadelphia Union, and anything MLS to the English Premier League. Visit Roughneck Scarves at roughneckscarves.com. Welcome to the Straight Red Card. Uh, today we have on board with us uh, Du Nords, uh, Bruce McGuire. Bruce, thanks for coming on, and hopefully I pronounced that in the proper northern uh, pronunciation. It's my pleasure, and I think you can pronounce it any way you want, and I'm happy. It's just, <laughs> good. It's just good to be here. Do you get a lot of different pronunciations of Du Nord, or, you know, is it sort of, uh, is it an accent thing or, or is there an actual proper pronunciation of it no i think people pretty much get it right they just no one has any idea why i picked such a goofy name i love it I, I yeah love well it, it's it's uh it means the north right it's, it's, <laughs> that's <a> clarification it's, you know it's french and that's i, I live in the north and uh, minnesota was founded by french right and uh it means it's half of the state motto. The state motto is Etoile du Nord, which is the star of the north. Ah, that's right. That's the Minnesota yep. North Stars, right? Yep. Hence the Minnesota North Stars. Yeah. And that's how that all came about, right? I mean, how... And hence our uh, our local NASL team is the stars also from that same thing. Mm. So it all it all yeah. comes together, and it's all historically based. you got to love worlds, that. Worlds collide. Now, do they even speak French in Minnesota anywhere anymore? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought this because I was always under the impression the Scandinavians invaded and took over Minnesota eventually and pushed all the old French trappers out. Yeah, that is the thing. But the really the majority of people here are German. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I thought that was pretty much Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, but I'm wrong. Did I hear an octoon? <laughs> is that what I heard? <laughs> That was just me no. choke, choking on my vodka and uh, Sprite. <laughs> That's how we roll on the straight red card. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, speaking of... I'm, go ahead, Bruce. I'm sorry. I was going to say I'm enjoying a Schweppes ginger ale just so we can, you know, uh, so we I, know what each other's drinking. I'll speed mail you some, something to drop into that. <laughs> but uh all right you know we're talking minnesota now so what's all the buzz about this minnesota minnesota getting an mls team and by the way are you somehow involved with it i have nothing to do with it first off the bat but right. the real the real buzz comes from the fact that um the minnesota vikings want a new stadium mm. the nfl team as does every NFL team that hasn't gotten a new one in the last five years. You know, right. you guys know all about that. Oh yeah. yeah. We're still paying for it. Yep. Of course you are. <laughs> um, and is part of their, you know, big dog and pony show. They included in their presentations that they would like to put an MLS team in the stadium with the NFL team mm. to show that it would be used more. Because they will obviously want a lot of public money, and they're playing a bunch of municipalities off each other mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to get the best deal they can. Mm -hmm. And they throw the MLS in there, and I'm a skeptic. Mm -hmm. So I don't really believe any of it's true, but I say, well, I should at least ask somebody. Mm -hmm. So I sent word off to MLS, and they commented back that they have been talking to the Minnesota Vikings for a while. And the talks are ongoing, and wow. uh, there's nothing more to it than that. But mm. it is conversations, so it's real. Mm. As I was gonna say, it's still on. They've been having ongoing conversations with Miami, but it hasn't put them anywhere closer to getting a team. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if investors have been talking to Miami That's after after the after the Barcelona thing fell apart. That's right. Very true. Yeah. See, this isn't this isn't fans or people who dream of a team. This is this is people with real money. That's right. And as the New York Cosmos are figuring out, Bruce, as yeah. we see that thing sort of fizzle, is that's what it's going to take in the end, real money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Cosmos obviously have phenomenal PR, but beyond PR, I don't know if they have anything. Yeah, well, exactly. They have phenomenal PR, 
I, I think maybe they did have that. I'm not sure where it's headed now. What they do have, of course, is phenomenal history, kind of like Portland yeah. does and Seattle does. And you're you're thinking uh, maybe that's enough. Well, that's what I think New York is thinking because I think the pockets there in New York, the Cosmos pockets, they're not real full. Real no, I, I think I think they're wearing suits with maybe fake designer labels on them. <laughs> Now, about this Minnesota thing, you know, yeah. we, we just saw the roof fall in last year in the old stadium. But, okay, they build a new stadium. We're looking at pro turf. You know, we're looking at turf, right? We're not looking at real grass because they're going to cover that stadium uh, with a roof, right? The plan now is for fake turf, but the plan is also for a retractable roof, which would open the door for real turf. Hmm. But I would say it's going to be fake turf. Yeah. Yeah. Indiana Indiana has the uh, retractable roof as well, but we still play on the uh, fake turf as well. Yeah. That's because that's what the NFL loves. Mm hmm. I don't know if any of you you have ever fell on that stuff, but it's it's (sighs) it's like uh, falling on a cement floor with just a little bit of rug on top of it. I've talked to pro football players, and they love it. They hate real grass. Oh, that's interesting. I'm serious, man. They, well, what they, they like the consistency of the of the turf, and when they go from city to city, the turf is pretty much the same everywhere. Hmm. I was watching the uh, what the Seattle and uh, Portland game, and yeah. when that when that fake turf gets pooled up with water, it doesn't it does not doesn't help anybody out. It doesn't turn it. There's no consistency level anywhere in there. It's a really sad game to watch, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was back and forth. I remember. A couple of years ago, I was at MLS Cup in Seattle, and uh, the whole during the whole game, I just kept thinking about that how how ugly the game looked because of that turf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it may turf may be great for football players, and they may just love it all to death. But in the end, I think it's not great for soccer. So hopefully, we do see an evolution there eventually. But what about the South? Um, we have a lot of people uh, bitching and complaining from Tampa, Atlanta. Miami, Orlando. yeah, they're always saying, "Hey, there are no teams in the South." But is there any evidence at all in your mind, Bruce, that the South deserves a team? Well, if you went on how many people went to games in the second division in Toronto and Seattle, those markets did not deserve teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they had the right ownership in place, and that makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Although, well, actually, I'll argue to the end that Toronto does not have the right ownership, and they never have, but that's yeah. my problem. Mm-hmm. Um, they put people in the stands. Seattle's been a success. I don't know. Tampa and Orlando have both done really well in the early part of their season here with their teams. Mm-hmm. Um, Tampa's in the second division, and Orlando's in the third division. And then Miami moved their team up to Fort Lauderdale, and they had a big step up in in uh, attendance already this year too so Mm -hmm. i mean you know those are all legitimate places in a way but whether they're really legitimate i don't know yeah i mean because we've already had obviously we've already had teams in miami and that didn't work out so well and then you look at the history of florida teams in general whether it be orlando or tampa or miami they have a hard time whether it's baseball or football they have a hard time getting people to come out and watch games out, you know, beyond a certain number, it's they're limited. Yeah, it seems like the Dolphins are the only one with success continuously. Yeah. I do think, though, that the myth that Miami wasn't successful is a little bit wrong because I know people who were there and they had decent crowds. Mm-hmm. And if they would have had the right owner in place, I think they could have made it work. But mm-hmm. MLS gave them a, basically an ultimatum, saying either you pony up more and really become part of the ownership of this league, or you're out. And the guy said, "I'm out." Yeah. And that was a, Tampa's a different yeah. story, but Miami, mm-hmm. and they and they let's not be fooled either. They didn't play in Miami. They played, you know, they went up to to Fort Lauderdale and played where yeah. the strikers are now. Right. And you know why not just call it Fort uh, the, a Fort Lauderdale team then? There you go. You well, know, Miami has a bigger ring to it, especially yes. if you're trying to attract uh, foreign players. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't they? I don't. The, I don't the, doubt that. Weren't they the team with a bat? Who was the team with the bat for the for the symbol? The Digibat? Yeah. The digital bat? Yeah. That was Tampa, man. Oh, that was Tampa, my bad. That was Tampa, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Actually someone I someone I know just found a Tampa hat and they promised it to me, but I haven't seen it yet, so I'm still waiting. I don't get rid of it. Yeah. I was really intoxi- well, they, intoxicated through yeah. most of the nineties, so you know, just have to yeah. see. <laughs> 
But, one of the great sports logos of all time, though, obviously. I thought it was. It was one of my favorites. I just couldn't pin it on which uh, Florida team it was. Okay, but we, I couldn't. Keep, I couldn't keep a straight face. That was my problem. <laughs> While we're talking about teams of the yeah, South, yeah. Um, there's the topic of uh, Atlanta getting a team. I mean, they've they've been in the talks for forever now. Silverbacks. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people talk about how they uh, have a have a hard problem as far as attracting fans and keeping the fans at the stadium. You know, you even look at the the, pro, uh, the professional teams they have now, and they talk about the attendance being the issue. Well, maybe they got the wrong sport there. Maybe soccer is what people want. I don't know. Yeah. I think the tough... I do, Go ahead. I have heard many times that, that, that there are people there that have been working behind the scenes for a long time to put, finan- to put financing together to build a, an entire complex mm. that would give the soccer team their own stadium that would go along with a brand new NFL stadium and things like that. But mm-hmm. I think they're also talking about a new convention center and they want to tie all this together into one big place. But... Yeah. I've never really heard many details in the last year. And don't the Silverbacks play under an, a highway overpass right now? Anyhow, <laughs> that's what I. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't, I may be it's close to one. They're not bad. actually. They're not actually under one. But. <laughs> okay, all right. That's my usual. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm always exaggerating. But you know, a lot of people say you know there's not enough uh, MLS history. Uh, in Atlanta for their the, the Silverbacks or whatever version of Atlanta, an Atlanta team that may uh, develop to become an MLS team. But then again, there's not really a whole lot of history in Philadelphia prior to Philadelphia becoming an MLS team too. So how do you balance those things? Yeah, I can't take any of those things into account. So yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot bigger factors these days than how many people have gone to see minor league sports. Yeah. And then, you know, minor league sports, for Christ's sake. I mean, how many minor league baseball teams fold over and over and over again all over the country? So, no, no, Americans in general, I mean, you have to really, there has to be this, this very tangible connection between the fans and a minor league team in any sport, whether it be XFL or even, you know, baseball, for it to succeed or last at, at any level for any length of time. So that's always a challenge. So I'm surprised some of these USL teams have been around as long as they have. Well, I know here in baseball, the Minnesota Twins have played the last 30 years in Minneapolis in a dome stadium. And then at one point, maybe 20 years ago, St. Paul decided to put in a minor league team outside. And at least they used that little that little hitch as their marketing tool. And they made the stadium like five or 6,000 seats, mm-hmm. and they would fill it all the time because it was, quote-unquote, outdoor baseball. Yeah. But mm-hmm. now that the Twins have moved back outdoors, you know, there's not really much of a point. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, well, I don't know. It's yeah. all in, the, it's all in the, how you line up all the cards, not just one card at a time. Yeah, agreed. How about Indianapolis, Bruce? Come on, throw us a bone here, here in Indianapolis. I've, I've, <laughs> I've been there twice, and both times it was raining. <laughs> and it was raining all day to do, all day that's today all I, as well, yeah. That's all I got for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We're becoming the Seattle of the Midwest, I guess. I don't know what's going Must on be, there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good thing, then, because that means your stadium would be packed for every single game. <laughs>